everybody, it's your boy Twin Plays here, back in another video. I hope you guys are doing amazing. If you are new to my channel, feel free to click that subscribe button and turn on that post notifications. It means so much to me. Um, and yeah, welcome. So in this video, we are going to be talking about remote functions and events. Nothing too crazy. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty simple. Also, while you're at it, maybe join the Discord because we do help out a lot of people there, and it means a lot to me, by the way. Um, and I will talk to you personally. And um, yeah. So, we're going to be talking about events. Let's get right into this. Alrighty. So, if you were here in the last video, we talked about functions. Now, there is a lot of things we are going to learn today, mainly about um, events and also remote functions, which I'll bring this one back over here. But we're going to talk about events. Um, so, I'll just read this right off of here because this is a great um, source of information on developer.roblox.com, which I recommend checking out. But yeah, so in addition to properties and functions, every object also has events which can be used to set up cause and effect systems. Events send out signals, which we're going to talk about in a sec, when specific things happen in a game such as a player touching an object or a player connecting to the game. To fire an event, it is to have to send out such a signal. Waiting for an event, as in wait, you could do, um, once it occurs, uh, the function returns the data associated with the events firing. So as in saying, you have a player, um, and right here, so this is a great representation, which we will script in a sec. Um, local my part equals, you know, workspace.part, and when the thing gets touched, it will print out what it was touched by. Now, connecting a function. So, we're actually going to do this one personally, and we will talk about this. So, there is a lot of things with events personally, and um, yeah, so we're going to create a part real quick in workspace. Um, oops, not a particle emitter. Sorry, part like this. And we will just put this right here, of course. And let's just spread this out. I'm going to anchor this and we will call this name uh, touch part um, just like that. And then we will add a server script service. And I mean, no, we will actually, let's just do this instead. Let's add a script into the part and we will do this. So you could do local part equals script dot parent. So that's going to be the part and we could say um, local function on touched and then we will do the other part and we will close that off and then if we do part oops touched and this is another event so um basically this is another um this is going to be an event um now if we close it off like this okay this is a signal and we do this and we hit connect and then on touched just like that um basically it will uh send out that value so you need to uh, you don't need to worry about that just like this this works perfectly fine um and that will work for you so what we will want to do is we will want to say print and then we are going to want to go um right here and we're going to say part was touched by and then you could say dot 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 other part dot name all right um so basically how this works is we have our local function like i said in the last video and we have this event uh, or signal i guess you could say and it's touched and it will connect and it will um do here as we say so we're going to play this real quick and i'm going to show you how this works and um, nothing too crazy. So when we go over here, I'll clean up it and do 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 and see it is saying left lower leg, right lower leg. This is all the legs, foot and stuff. So this is actually really nice because you could use this kind of stuff for some great examples of like the touching certain part materials. I did that in one video actually, by the way. So um, talking about this we would want to do many things with this you could also get the player name as well if you would do dot parent um dot name so you could do see this is this is just what it is you can do dot parent dot name as in saying that that um pretty simple but yeah so that's another way of doing this now if we were to do other things we can um talk about what we talked about in the last video sorry um we would do something like local players equals game get service and then players again and then of course um sorry this is a little little walkie right here sorry let me do this real quick um players and then we would do local function equals on player added and then you could go um player like that 
and then you would go players dot player added which is another signal see how there's all these signals this is another way of checking dot player added connect and then you could do on player added and basically you would say print layer dot name and also you could do another same thing by uh, basically going right here doing this and player uh, and you can do this on player removed and then you could do player.name and you could go um oh and we want to remove this by the way i did not I keep forgetting that players dot player removing connect on player removed so and then you could also do like player just joined and then you could go down here and you could say player just left so that's another way of doing this um Basically, by saying that, you'd hit play, and it will say, okay, Twin Plays Dev just joined that game. Um, oh, and I got name, which is stupid of me to do. Um, oh, and I know why. You could just print out player. Um, that is my fault. Oh, <laughs> that's why right here. That is my issue right here. Um, basically, by doing that, it will print everything out for you. So, player just joined Twin Plays Dev. And then if I hit stop, Twin Plays Dev just left. So that is another example of some of the little signal events and remote functions. Now, um, basically talking about remote functions and events, we are actually going to get straight into this because this is a little bit harder. But um, yeah, so if you don't understand what Roblox client and servers work together, I'd recommend looking out the first video that I just posted because this will help you out a ton. And it's not too hard. So some actions can be only performed by a server and other actions only by a client. For example, a player, as in saying the client, like I said in my first video, may activate a GUI button upon which a server needs to enact a game-wide change. In these changes, a remote event or a remote functions let server-side scripts and client-side local scripts communicate with each other. So talking about difference between remote events and functions, this is a great thing. I definitely, definitely recommend you always have this open because this helps out a ton if you don't remember what it means. So example, a player client presses P to key to drink an invisibility potion. Then a remote event, as in saying, um, a, a remote event that you make tells the server to make that player invisible to all other players. When a player friend joins a game, that player receives an on-screen notification. Uh, before a race begins, a count timer is shown to all players. So this is server all clients, server to client, client to server. So um, this is great example. So we would say right here, like you were um, right here. This is a, another example. Yeah, potion. And these, this is how that works. So a player chooses a new name for the in-game pets and shares with a friend. So client to clients, server to all clients, server to client, client to server. So these are all good examples. A remote function is designed for two-way communication such that it leaves information from across the server client, boundary, and wait for response from the other side. So a player client fires a projectile and then the server checks if the target was hit. Okay, so we're going client to server now. So when the player, if the target gets hit, it will send it back to the client as in saying you with the data which is nice but you can do this literally the same way so server client server now with remote events we are basically going to talk about this we are going to be putting them in re replicated storage and we are going to do a local script to server event script um, and then we will do some other stuff uh, I don't think we will get maybe we'll get in some yeah we'll get in some remote functions in a second here but um, yeah, so let's talk about a remote events. Pretty simple, nothing too crazy. So we are going to do a simple thing. So replicated storage, we are going to create a new remote event, as you can tell. And normally, guys, when I do this stuff, I always have folders. So just for good practices for you guys, I'd recommend doing something like this. You can do events, and then you could put your event in here. Now, um, then you can go into your script, and you can put that right here. And we would go into... Um, we're going to create a new GUI um, just like this. We are going to create a frame and a text button. You know what? Let's just do a text button. I mean, oops. Yeah, text button because we don't really need that. And we are going to just put that in the middle of our screen. And bada beam, bada boom. Then we are going to add in here a local script. And we have our server script. So it's all set up. 
So, using from the first, the second, for the first, second, and third video, we are going to be doing this now. We are going to get our variable and we are going to do the remote event. So, the re local remote, um, actually, this is better replicated storage um, equals game get service replicated storage. And then you could go local event equals replicated storage, wait for child events, and then dot remote event. There we go. So now we have a remote event, and this is a service replicated storage. We are going to do a few things. So we are going to want to actually make this code even more simpler. And by doing that, we are going to do local button um, equals script dot parent. And we're going to do this. So button dot mouse button one click, which as you can tell, let me just show that one more time for you. Mouse button one click is a fun, uh, is an, a signal, an event. We are going to do that and we're going to do connect function oops and we're going to close that off like that and we are going to um let's do fire this event so now we are going to fire this event and we want to just like fire something for fun so let's like you know let's just say val you know equals okay we fired so what we would do is you would do event oops fire um, server as in saying we are firing from the client to the server um, and then we're going to put val um, now you also could put player then val um, i recommend just doing um, and also to get player yes you would just do player like this um, we let's let's do that let's actually do that for you this will be nice so we can check through here all right so now using this event we are firing to the server which will be in server script service now let's go to here and we are going to do this exact same thing the same way. Um, so I actually will just copy this and we'll put that right there. And then we will go right here and we'll say event dot on server event, which is another signal like that. Connect function. And we will do this and we will type in the parameters again, player val. And we will do this. We will print player and we will print val. So that's how this works. Now. If we hit play right here and we were to go and just click play, what's going to happen is it's going to fire from the uh, client side to the server side. So click it and we get twin plays dev and we get nil. Um, so I actually didn't do that correctly. Um, you're supposed to just uh, do, you know, two string and it should print that out for you. I don't know if, yeah, it's still got nil for that. So um, if I'm right, you could actually just fire value and it should print that out and if you see what i mean it's it's a little different um so that's that's basically another way of saying this and so there we go i just did that for you so twin plays dev and okay we fired so you also sorry i guess i should have done that instead um you don't need um right here so right here you fire the value when you fire it from the client side to the server you only can need to do the value you don't need to do uh the player because it already knows the player and then right here you're printing out player and the value because that's what it got already player is always always justified but if you were to just do value like that it would print out it would instead it would be like okay so sorry let's just say this in general if i were to just do value okay and we were to just print it like this it would print out my name instead of uh, this, okay, we fired because we need that first parameter. So just like that, that's what I mean. And bada beam, bada boom. So remote events, I mean, remote function guys, sorry, um, are a little bit more different. Um, and I think I'm gonna do a separate video on that because I, sorry, I said I was gonna do a video on that, but let's do that in the next video because this video is pretty long. And um, yeah, so you'll, we'll do that in the next video. I hope you guys did enjoy this tutorial. If you did, please feel free to subscribe, comment, like, and share. Um, I'll be seeing you guys in the next one. This isn't too bad. Um, but yeah, so I hope you did enjoy this. I will see you in the next one. Uh, bye bye.